G'day YouTubers, uh, today I'm doing another brew. This one's uh, the easy side of all grain. The easy side of all grain because it shouldn't be terribly difficult once you've got all the equipment and what have you. So I'm just weighing out my grains and uh, bringing my strike water up to temperature. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so my grains are all weighed out. I put 2.25 kilos of pale Turo, 2.25 kilos of Marisota, 250 grams of toffee, and 250 grams of light crystal to And that's, that's our grains, all crushed and ready for action. We'll just put that on top of there to keep the bugs and things out and we will be okay. right back. We've got the grains and I don't muck around with it, I just dump it all in. And I don't tend to get any dough balls or very few to speak of. So, I just don't muck around. And let's just check our temperature. Sixty-six, sixty-seven. Stage, I'm going to take a pH reading. Now, how I do that is I've already calibrated my pH meter. So I'll take that. pH is. I'm guessing it'll be around probably five and a half. I don't have salts or anything like that to uh, well that's not too bad actually if you can uh, let me just come around here Five point four, which is only point two above where it sort of should be, so it's not too bad considering I haven't added any salts or anything like that. Um, yeah, so we'll get on with it. And um, while um, we're just about at the end of the um, mash, we've got about fifteen minutes to go. So I like to get my um, sparge water ready to go um, and because of the size of my um, because of the size of my uh, sparge 
pots, they're both nine litres. Um, I tend to, instead of three litres per kilo, I go 3.5, so I put 17 and a half litres of strike water and 15 litres of sparge water, and that way I can fit it all in here. And it's pretty easy going. Yeah, so this is a process called, uh, the correct term is vol off and it's just basically setting the grain bed in there and getting the runnings to come out clear. So I started obviously quite slow as you can see that's fairly slow. It's fairly slow just to set the grain bed for starters and this is my second litre so after this I'm just going to let it go because I know from experience that two litres is plenty to get it to run clear for me And I run it through back through this colander so that it doesn't disturb the grain bed too much and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be right back when we are uh, adding our um, barge water goes seven and a half litres sparge water and another seven and a half in this one which makes 15 because I personally don't think there's a bugger all difference between uh, having more strike water and less sparge water or, or vice versa I don't really see it as an issue alright let's see what temperature we achieved according to our more accurate uh, okay so we got about 71 71 72 around there that'll be fine that will be perfectly fine so what this recipe calls for is 40 grams of cascade and 40 grams of mochu acre at 10 minutes and 60 grams of each at uh, for dry hopping for three days so I will use both of these packets up so first of all with the cascade okay right we'll go There we go, there's 40 grams. We'll 
place it in this Ziploc bag and we'll go should have 60 grams left well they short changed me 2 grams I'm not particularly worried about 2 grams it's going to make very little difference Okay, let's see if I got shortchanged with the uh, mock choika, eh? Here's our 10 minute edition. So, we should have 60 grams left. Yay! We've got 60 grams left. Only had 58 of the Cascade, but oh well. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Now, I need to. Weigh out my sink, uh, my fuggles for the 60 minute boil because I should have had 20 grams of it, but I don't think I've quite got 20 grams of it. Tell you what, I'll do steal a wee bit off the dry hop. Here we go, that'll do it. So that's my bittering edition. Okay. Now the the next process I'm going to do is uh, the second uh, fall off and gather my second runnings. And I'm not going to show you that because it's pretty. Uh, it's exactly what you've just seen. And this is uh, what's commonly known as the hot break. We're just hitting the boiling stage of the wort now. And this will foam up a little and the foam will be reabsorbed back into the solution. And uh, at that stage we'll be ready to put our bittering hops in. So. We'll be right back. And as you can see, a lot of these uh, proteins have reabsorbed into the the rest of the wort. So I'm going to go ahead at that and add my 60-minute hop addition, which is well, it was supposed to be 20 grams of fuggles, but it's uh, it's 18 grams of fuggles and 2 grams of a combination of uh, Mosa, uh, Mochueka and Cascade. So it's it's not a big deal. It's only for bittering so it's not like the flavour profiles are going to sort of come through on the bittering side of things. And just get that in there, go around. Here we go, start our time up for 60 minutes. And rehydrating my yeast as I always do.
that rack goes over that. A little bit of glad wrap. Goes over the top. Okay, so that's boil complete. We've uh, turned the, uh, the elements off. Now what I like to do, because it was only a 10 minute edition, a very late edition, is just swish it around a little bit. And then, I pin that to the side. We'll then go outside and turn on the cold tap. show you uh, the range we're in what's that say 22.8 22.8 so that's pretty good that's a good place to start Okay, we're going into the fermenter now. Yes, and we're getting a fair bit of uh, oxygenation going on there using that sieve. It's the first time I've ever done that actually. It's a bloody good idea. Take a look at that. All that there gunk that I kept out of the old uh, the old fermenter. I might give that a wee whiz up. 